Well, once again, we're very happy to have with us Dennis McLean, eighth year here at Lee School. Denny, we appreciate very much what you do. Come here and help out with youth activities. Well, we stuff. have a great time over here. Uh, Lee, Lee has been uh, something that uh, we have seen come a long way in the last eight years. I mean, the programs are thriving now. The things are looking good. And, and it's only because of the people out there doing what they do. Yeah. And uh, they come out for this event. It's wonderful. And all the other little things that Ty and Denny do during the season are just terrific. You gotta, guys got to keep doing it because just because we're here this year, God only knows what's happening yeah. next year. And for the next 10, 20, 50 years, th these programs got to remain intact. So you got to do what you got to do. It's the smallest school district in the area. Right. But it's real close net. It is. And it is absolutely. Community support is great. And we see the same people every year. Yeah. Uh, no matter where, if we go out to a restaurant, we go out to a function elsewhere around town, a, a dinner, uh, it's unbelievable. It's the same people everywhere. Yeah. And it, it's great. I mean, they support the community. And that's, and that's, you don't see that everywhere. No, you don't. You've been doing a lot of these type of programs lately? Yeah, we probably do 150 to 200 events a year. You're coming back, I think, in March, aren't you? Uh, As a matter of fact, I'm coming back next week. I've got a show at the Voss Center with, okay. uh, with a company over there for a couple of days, which are going to have a good time. And uh, then we've got a big uh, uh, tiger debate coming up yes. in March. And um, we will be, uh, right now, it's still tentatively scheduled for March 7th. That may change because of the weather. We've changed it once because of the weather. We don't want to take any chances. No. And, get, you know, so the later we make it, we might be better off. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to make that decision by Monday because this weather this year has been It's been a hell. very, very different just been, winter. Just horrible. Yeah. And it never gets better. Mm -hmm. You know, now yeah. we got a little bit of a break today, but, you know, by 5 o'clock today, it you know, could be dramatically well, different. Well, these side streets around here are just oh my ridiculous. God. I oh. mean, it's off clear and the, ice. And the snow piles are five, yeah. six, eight feet high. You've got to be very careful when you pull out onto a yeah. street. So. And it took me about two or three weeks ago when I was over here, you guys were having a lot of it, it took me to go 110 miles. It took me three hours and 40 minutes to get home. I mean, it was a night of terror. Well, so, you know, we talk about the Tigers every time we come here. Real different look this year. Yeah, and uh, I hate to say this, I don't think it's as good a look as it's been in the past. Uh, you traded two guys, you got rid of two guys who did not need to be get, gotten rid of. Uh, first of all, Fister, who's probably the best pitcher on the team, mm -hmm. you traded him, um, and you didn't get much back, you didn't get much substance back. Uh, and I don't mean Fister had the best fastball or curveball or slider. Fister had the best pitching ideas of anybody on the club. He knew how to manage what he had, and he was very good at what he did. Uh, and then, of course, you trade Fielder. Let me, let me warn everybody right now. Fielder is what allowed Cabrera to hit 340. Right. Because nobody wanted to pitch against Fielder with people on base. Yep. And, and see, I always thought Jimmy did it backwards. I, I thought Jimmy should have had Fielder hitting in front of Cabrera, and Fielder would have hit 340, 350. Mm -hmm. Whoever was hitting in front of the other yep. was going to have the big year. And I think only because Jimmy is a little bit bullheaded, as we all know, Jimmy is not going to change his mind about once he takes a cement no. stand, and he certainly did. But the bottom line is, don't, don't, don't be upset if he doesn't hit 340, and don't be upset if he doesn't knock in 120 runs, because they have altered the complexion and the structure of this yeah. club, and I think other bad things can happen. And uh, we are not th defensively, we're not as good. Uh, and uh, I think there's still, listen, I think one of the biggest needs is the catching department. We don't have a good catcher. He, he's a good kid. He works hard. He, he does all the things. But for some reason, there are some guys that get it and some guys that yeah. don't. And at this point, he's one of those guys that don't. And I can tell you, and you may know who I'm talking about, one of the great guys who have ever put on a Detroit Tiger uniform has said to me, he just won't listen. So you can figure out who that guy is telling me. And it's unfortunate because if you listen to this guy, you can only get better. And the guy at third base, Castellano, is going to be a superstar. The problem is we traded the other superstar, Garcia. And, of course, that was a whole kind of a mess thing going on with the ball club, domestic-oriented, actually. But uh, when Garcia left, he was the best prospect in baseball. And I suspect he will be a legitimate superstar in a year or two. And then the manager, of course, is new, young. Young, inexperienced. New, I mean, new is, isn't the right word. I mean, he's never managed. Uh, and 
and I don't and I don't think it's as much as a challenge as much as it is a problem for him to have to deal with a culture. We have a lot of Latino guys in this club. And and if they ever get mad at you, if they ever really get upset with you, like when Pudge was here and Pudge got all upset with a with a manager, mm-hmm. there's a tendency for those guys to kind of quit or, or play softly, uh, not take chances. I hope that if in fact that happens, that it doesn't do that like it happened once before. Uh, but I think that's as tough as challenges, the cultural issues you'll have to deal with, and they are tough. Supposedly going to be a team with more speed, but... Uh, Got to get on base. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you don't get on base, you can't steal. Can't steal first. And, I, you, know, and you can sacrifice, but... Uh, you know, you got to have those guys who can get on that base ahead of these hitters, and it doesn't look like they've got even a leadoff spot. You know, we haven't been consistent there in the last few years. Well, you know, it, those are things you're going to find out in spring training, and and uh, does Osmus have the experience to identify that? Why did they hire him? I mean, there's never been a reason given other than, I thought he was the right guy. Well, you know, Jimmy Leland was the right guy. He had the experience. Uh, they, it, it, this Osmus thing reminds me of what they did to Alan Trammell. They set him up for failure. I hope they haven't done this to him because he, yeah. he's going to take the heat. Yeah. And it's not going to be his fault because Dombrowski is the guy that puts the team together. Dombrowski is the guy that's supposed to watch everything. And let's see if he's watched all the holes that need to be filled in here. We got a bunch. Well, Trammell's doing really well, but good with Gibson. The two well, of them are good team. And, and, I, think, and I think Alan... That's the kind of coach he is. He may get another shot one day, but he's going to have to get a lot more experience to, to really be able to understand all the positions. See, I, I have a tough time with position play. Catchers, I'm okay with. Pitchers, I'm okay with managing because pitchers and catchers play every inning, every pitch. Mm-hmm. Guys who play shortstop in the outfield don't, if you know, if you know what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, so let's just see what happens. I, I, I'd love to see Allen get another shot. Gibson's done well in Arizona. Yes. He'll continue to do well. And, uh, you know, you, you know, Gibby is one of those guys that can have that TNT explosion from time to time. So Allen might be the right guy sitting there for an opportunity. You don't know. How do you see the uh, Central Division? Who's the strong team there this year? It's still us. Um, we're not as strong as we were. Probably the weaker division, right? It is the weakest division in baseball. It's that, been that way for three or four years. I mean, we if we don't win the division, that really t- talks about how badly this club mm-hmm. is put together. But uh, you know, there's only one club that's really made some improvement, and that's Kansas City, and they're still looking around for some more hitters. Uh, if they get a couple, uh, another couple hitters, some guys that can really make some impact, they've got a shot. Uh, Cleveland is Cleveland. I don't care what they do, how they did it, how they finished. They are still Cleveland. They talk about their pitching staff. Whatever pitching staff they're talking about, they apparently are not talking about the one they have in place because they are mediocre at best. And uh, so when you look at our club, if Verlander stays healthy, if uh, um, Scherzer, who had lightning in a bottle last year, can win 14, 15, where, where he normally would be, uh, then I think you'll win the division. I don't think you're going to win anything easily. I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I think and I suggest that if we had a better catcher, maybe, but I, I, uh, I really believe in good catchers. I played, I pitched against the best catcher in, I think, the history of the game, freehand, mechanically. Yeah. And uh, I haven't seen a freehand here in a long time. Parrish was close. Mm-hmm. Parrish was very good. But uh, there's only been one Bill Freehand here. And here's a guy who made the All-Star team 11 times in his career and doesn't ever get a vote for the Hall of Fame. Mm. Makes no sense to me. Yet, if you kiss a lot of butts in New York <laughs> and some of these other places, you can get a guy into the Hall yeah. of Fame. Makes no sense. Who's, which is the strong division in the American League? The West? Oh, I think the, the West and the East, too. I, listen, you got the, whenever you got the Yankees in Boston in the same place, yeah. you've got a hell of a division. And as far as the Western division, you've got a lot of good clubs out there. Look what Seattle did. They spent a lot mm-hmm. of money this year. Uh, Anaheim spent a lot of money. So you got Texas. I mean, that is a, a real competitive division. It's, and they're fun to watch. The, the mm-hmm. Western division is fun to watch because they do so many crazy things. They run the bases. They do a lot of bunting. They do a lot of hitting and running. And when they play baseball to that degree, it's an awful lot more fun to watch. Yankees, of course, will be without Rodriguez. Yeah. And uh, so Jeter, far. Jeter's so far. La- Jeter's last year. Yeah. Good career. 
Yeah, uh, quite a guy. Uh, I heard him talking the other day about uh, having a family finally. And I'm thinking uh, all of the people that have played this game that have raised their children while playing, uh, yeah, it's a struggle because the husband's on the road yeah. all the time. But on the other hand, you're on the road making $5 million a year. It can't be that tough. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're right I, there. Su I suppose Derek uh, has uh, enjoyed the benefits of who he is in the great city of New York. Yeah. And uh, I think anybody with a little bit of half, just a half-cocked brain would understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, you know, read between the lines. But, Denny, we see so many of these athletes in all the professional sports. They make big money, and after they retire, it only takes them a few years just to go broke. No, that's not true. That's unfair. Well, there's some of them. Uh, you know, it, we're talking. I don't think Major League Baseball players or football or anybody else reflect any greater amount of guys having trouble than society in general. I don't think okay. it's any bigger and any less. Uh, the difference is when you've got a high profile, we're going to read about it. We don't read about Mr. Jones, that's, yeah, that's true. who lives in the suburbs, who, who you know bankrupts somebody yeah. for ninety billion dollars. We don't read about that, but we do read about uh, Kurt Schilling. Uh, who, you know, that was a pretty serious one. I think it was for well over $100 million. He got the state, I think, for 40 or 50, 60 million, too. Uh, wound up, you know, going through bankruptcy himself and everything else. But those things happen. I mean, it's not that he didn't want it to happen. He didn't start out to, to take 60 million from yeah. the state. I mean, people make mistakes. God knows, I know. And uh, you don't do anything on purpose. That's what people have to understand. And, and we are just a normal side of life. The difference is the profile. Yeah, well, of course, the uh, media picks those sure. and makes a big deal of it. It so. helps, uh, you know, rather than being able to use that newspaper immediately for the bottom of your birdcage, you got to read an article once in a while to see who, who had yeah, a problem. Yeah. yeah, you can't. That was a joke. You know, these reporters. That was a joke. Huh? That was a joke. It was? <laughs> Slap him, would you? <laughs> Denny. <laughs> Sometimes you get to me. <laughs> okay, let's move on. All right. You know, which way I you want to go <laughs> after that? <laughs> okay, what's ahead for you the next uh, couple of years? What, do you, what plans you got? Well, you know, we do an awful lot of personal appearances. We do probably 150 to 200 a year. Uh, we've got, in, in a major way, the uh, baseball collection, sports collection business. Uh, we've got an awful lot of memorabilia and um, something we should have been doing a long time ago. But, uh, and of course, uh, you know, there's little things that we, we do uh, business-wise and, uh, uh, and I, you know, I enjoy life. I mean, my wife Sharon and I have been married 50 years and uh, we still enjoy seeing each other every day, I think. <laughs> and uh, she's still a lot of fun to be around. She's been very sick. She continues to be sick. And, um, um, you know, we, uh, we, we do an awful lot of praying uh, to make sure yeah. that she's around next week and next month. Because, hell, I don't know what I would do without her. Yeah, well, I mean, I have no idea. She's been a part of my life for more than 50 years, and uh, I can't imagine her not being there. Well, I understand. And no one else is going to do my underwear. My wife and I have been 57 years. I can understand. You know what, what I mean. Saying. You know exactly. what I mean. I mean, you you don't even know where your underwear drawer is. So, <laughs> I, my wife was in the hospital for three weeks, and wow. I, you know, I found out what it was like, and it's not very nice at all. I agree with you, unless you live so, in New York. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got that one. Okay. <laughs> so it hasn't been that long. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, Denny, once again, thank you. We really appreciate your being here for eight My years pleasure. now. I've had a great uh, time. It's just uh, just wonderful to have and you. And, you know, there, there should be some, sometimes, somehow, some way, we've got to all come together one day and have a, a day or a night uh, for Ty Emmerlander and Denny. Uh, God, I can never pronounce Grundyke. Denny's way. How, how do you pronounce it? Grun Grundyke. Grundyke. These two guys have been saints for this school, yep. honest to God. Yep. Uh, what happens in the sports department, they've had so much to do with. Yep. And they've had so much to do with the keeping the programs alive. One day we gotta have a right kind of dinner for these guys that we can honor them and let people know what they've done because well, they've been real saints. I can tell you that Ty had great bringing up. 
Yeah, his, he did. His, his mother was a great friend of my wife, and his dad and I were, came from the same high school together. We're okay. friends. And uh, we've known these kids ever since they were little. Yep. And just a good Christian bringing up. And uh, yep. they, they work for other people. Yep. Not, they do. Not they do. And, the, and the other thing is, uh, it's like I told them both the other day. I said, listen, first of all, there's nothing worse than a reformed fat guy. Okay, nothing. <laughs> and I am a reformed fat guy. And I've lost 157 pounds. But the thing about it is, they are they really look heavy to me now and and last night at dinner i was on the two of them all night i said my god you're going to have a cow you're going to have a bull whatever you're having you're, you're about to have it let's stop let's stop down now i said let's cool it off a little bit and as i passed my extra part of my meal on to denny and ty and they ate it so i mean they were eating last night like like they were going to the gas chamber for yeah. god's sakes you know the last supper they're going to ever have so well you're the, right. they are good guys you're right they are a big asset to yep, this school they really and, are uh, they really love kids it's they do you can indeed tell. they do, they do indeed. and they work hard with them so yes, they do anyway well anyway thank and by you. the way amanda the yeah. Ty's daughter got a scholarship. That's right, to a good Christian uh, four year, school. Uh, Christian or not, it's it's a great opportunity yes. to get a four She's year. She's a great young she lady. She can pitch, boy, yep. and she is she one hell of a little girl. I yep. mean, she is terrific. And you know what? I've seen her grow up since eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now she's this beautiful 17, 18 year old young lady. And, and you just, you know, the, the way the kids mature and they come up and how they act and how they treat, especially older people, guys like yourself. Yeah. And uh, the bottom line simply is they have perfect manners, and yeah. that's what we look for, and they have absolutely had that passed down yeah. to them by Ty. I agree. We should Ty. do something special Absolutely. For okay. Absolutely. Thanks again, Danny. My pleasure. Thank All you right. very much. Get them, back, get them back to the home. <laughs>